Actually, Cindy and I met at 100 Entrepreneurs. Uh, so we we can we can thank 100 entrepreneurs for everything that's come after and this is why you do networking <laughs> i was i was looking for a speaker to talk about um uh, funding a business and i was asking all these people do you know anyone and one of our mutual friends sean uh introduced us uh, and he was beside himself about Cindy, and it uh, turns out she's just as great as he said she was, <laughs> and uh, so we have 100 entrepreneurs to thank <laughs> for our connection. Cindy's spoken several times about funding a business, and and she was a baker, but she, I'm going to let her tell, tell you she's also done a lot of other things. Cindy, do you want to throw, uh, take that, introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Amanda. And thanks, Bob, for having us here. So yeah, I spent probably 35 years in banking, primarily at Bank of America. And I worked with small businesses, mid-sized businesses, and um, even some large cap companies. And then when I retired, I met Amanda shortly thereafter, and we started doing these workshops together. And um I'm also a leadership and career coach. That's my side hustle, Karina. <laughs> so, um, so that's, we've been doing that for what, over 10 years now. We've been developing, we've been working, presenting this workshop basically for entrepreneurs to help them figure out if their business idea makes sense. And we had uh, we were working with uh, Chris Santiago in the beginning, yeah. uh, who created for us a model. Basically, we were the we had my marketing background. And thanks everybody. Chris Santiago is a wounded vet, Marine was wounded about fifteen years ago, and has had a remarkable career since then. And we had this great combination. Uh, my background is marketing. Cindy's background is finance, and um, Chris is just brilliant across all fronts. But uh, his he was especially uh, remarkable in terms of IT and and uh, model building for for our workshop. And so we created a workshop that um, the, and the purpose it's really to build a realistic forecast of a business from prospecting for the business to profitability. Uh, and so that takes you through the entire business processes. Uh, the, we built this proprietary model so that uh, our uh, participants could use the model again and again as they changed um, as they change things in their business as well as uh, to establish the initial uh, profitability. And we also provided information about marketing and uh, and about all of the costs associated, including fixed and variable costs. And, and, and in marketing, a key part of that was to gauge the number of prospects you need to make a sale, because I think that's one of the key things that entrepreneurs uh, underestimate. <laughs> it takes a lot of prospects to make a sale. So uh, we, we've, um, so we've given to this workshop over 12 years plus to civilians as well as uh, wounded warriors and dog tag bakery. And, and that was in person. And then since the pandemic via Zoom and most, most of the attendees got affirmation once they went through the process that this was a business idea worth their time and money uh, that they would have to invest, which is always considerable. Uh, however, an equally positive result, some of the, the, the participants learned that they were, uh, that this was too much work, too much risk, uh, not enough opportunity for them. And they ended up deciding it was better to go get it, take a job or, or keep a job and do what they were doing before and get a paycheck every two weeks. And you know, that's a good result if you know, if you find that out before you've made the time uh, and um, financial investment in the, uh, the new business. So we asked uh, all the workshop participants, uh, you know, for, for a, we had a survey and asked them for their feedback because feedback is 
vitally important to all entrepreneurs and uh, 90 plus percent of them rated it excellent. And that made us think we had a good thing here. <laughs> yeah. So as Amanda said, we did this in person for years and years and years. And then like everyone else, the pandemic hit and we moved to Zoom and we continued to do the workshops primarily for Dog Tag Bakery via Zoom. And we realized, wow, if it works for Zoom, why couldn't we create an online platform where people could take the course self-paced on their own? And um, since we had already developed something virtually, we thought, well, it wouldn't be that difficult to sort of put it on a platform. So that's what we decided to do. And that's what the profitable idea is essentially is an online workshop that we had been delivering for years. So. How did we get started? And I think this is important it, whether you, no matter what business you're starting, you sort of have to start with the basics. You know, what did we need? Well, we needed to create some sort of corporation. So I use LegalZoom or CSC and I create, we created an LLC. Um, we needed to figure out what platform we were gonna use. So Amanda did a ton of research and we, decided we would use the software platform of Teachable. And then we figured out, to your point, Karina, what don't we know? Well, we don't know how to put an online course on the software platform. So we need to hire someone that actually has instructional background expertise. And so we found through Amanda's uh, daughter-in-law, somebody that could help us with that. We also found someone who could help us with the model since Chris was now working full-time somewhere else. And we needed somebody who could help us with customer experience. So we quickly realized the expertise we didn't have. And we found people that, again, we contract just like you, Karina, we contract them out and, and help them with their, or they helped us with the gaps that we didn't have in our, in our learning and expertise. And so we did have an initial partnership agreement and, um, I think that if you, if you use a company like LegalZoom or CSC, that's great. They're a lot cheaper, but you, you need to go through the partnership agreement and think about what is that going to look like in the future if you do add people. Like we're thinking about maybe if they're interested adding these people as partners into this uh, legal entity. And so you have to think about, well, what if one of them wants to get out? Um, how do we have to pay them? And what is their capital? What are they investing in time and money? And so we actually worked with Amanda's, who was it, Amanda? Son and brother-in-law. Brother-in-law, yeah. He knows everybody. <laughs> and he helped us work through just the nuances of that partnership agreement. Now, if you're a sole proprietor, you don't probably need to do that if you're not going to ever add any partners. But it is worthwhile to just go through that partnership agreement and think about what, what contingencies or nuances you need for your business. And then we realized, of course, as a banker, my first and foremost is always accounting and how are we going to create uh, the most basic accounting that we could. And for me, it's using things like uh, Google Sheets or Microsoft Online, just creating a P&L. If you don't have inventory or product, you don't really need something um, as complex and not, not that it's complex, but is QuickBooks. But you can do something extremely easy and quickly initially with something like Google Sheets or Microsoft Online. And then we found an accountant that would do our tax return. And, um, and you can go to e-file and you can create 1099s for all those contractors for like five bucks a piece. It's just super simple. And then we found that we didn't want to use either one of our home addresses. So we went to um, use one of those mailboxes like you can get at mailbox, et cetera. So on average, um, we when when we taught the course, we would tell people on average, if you're not selling product or inventory, an initial startup costs between thirty and thirty-five thousand dollars, and that's pretty much what Amanda and I have invested in this business so far. You you don't you want to play to your strengths. You don't want to be doing the things you don't you're not really strong at. And uh, 
so we hired a marketing firm for online marketing because that's uh, uh, there it's a fast changing evolving topic uh, and i fr frankly am not an expert so so we hired a, a group of people uh, called Social Light. Social Light has also been here speaking about marketing, uh, FYI. Uh, and they recommended right away that we get on LinkedIn and Pinterest. Uh, and um, we, we tried it for several months uh, to see if we got some responses and some emails, because one of the key things you want is to get people to your website and to get them to sign up for your newsletter, for example. And uh, we weren't, we, we've just started, so the attraction is low. But what we learned was that that Pinterest was not a place where we were hanging out. So, you know, it, it doesn't really make sense to go and put, have a marketing firm put your company out there on a, on a platform that you're not involved in. Uh, LinkedIn we're involved in. So it made perfect sense for us to be on LinkedIn. So we decided to focus our energies on LinkedIn and, and, and cancel the Pinterest. Not that it isn't a perfect platform for many things. I think it is. In fact, I think maybe that product that uh, Karina's working on would be beautiful on, on Pinterest, but uh, it just wasn't working for, for from our perspective for us. And we're eventually going to be doing ads on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Google ads. We have to decide that. That's We're working on that. We also did something very important, I think, when you're starting a small business or a new business. And that is we created a beta test. Uh, and a beta test helps you uh, test your product or service and also the processes associated with it and the marketing activity, what you say, how you say it. How do people interpret what you say? Um, it also allows you to test the process, you know, the, the, the customer experience. So what we did is we got about 20 beta customers and we had them test the product for free, of course. And they, they you know, uh, went through the course and gave feedback. And we had to make sure they could give feedback easily. So we had three ways for them to give feedback. One was through the course itself. In between each section, they could give feedback. They could also send us an email for um, via contact at theprofitableidea.com with feedback. <laughs> and then finally, they could, of course, call us and <laughs> email us and talk to us individually, which they did, by the way. They preferred that feedback loop to all of the others. And uh, so we, we ended up with good, with very good feedback and it's a critical part of a successful beta test. Uh, and um, eventually we're going to have coaching included in with the course. Uh, Cindy and I are both business coaches, small business coaches. And so we, with different areas of expertise. So she is going to, we, we're both going to do coaching at a de decreased price for those people who are buying the course. Pro other product enhancements are coming. For example, we constantly update the model with more and more experience. It's it's a beautiful model right now, but you know we'll find something to add every time. Um, and th so those are you know, going to be coming uh, uh, regularly. Finally, uh, we've decided that we're going to offer the course for free to 100 entrepreneurs uh, participants. And so I'm going to, at the end, I'll give you the information of how to get that course and with a uh, coupon code. Uh, so, uh, and of course, we'd like your feedback on that. 